got the brand new GoPro Hero 11 Black. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to do a complete unboxing. I'm gonna go through all of the components and different parts that come with the Hero 11 Black. I'm gonna go through the general menu settings to set up this camera. And then I'm also gonna go through the settings that I recommend for the best no edit footage from the GoPro Hero 11. And before we get started, a little bit about my background with GoPros. I've owned every single GoPro since the Hero 3 and I have spent thousands and thousands of hours working with these cameras. So I've got a good bit of experience with these and I've got a lot of tips that I wanna offer you with the goal of saving you time and making your experience with the GoPro as enjoyable as possible. If you're brand new to GoPro cameras, you'll probably learn a lot from this video today. If you've used a GoPro before, but you're brand new to the Hero 11 Black, you'll also learn a lot in today's video. Now to make this video as easy as possible to navigate because it is long, I've included a lengthy list of chapters down at the bottom. So if you wanna skip ahead, if there's a chapter that's more relevant to you than some of the others, feel free to skip ahead. And any of the accessories that I talk about at the end of today's video, I have also linked to those below in case you wanna check any of those out. Now, if you do find this video helpful as we go along, please hit that like button. It helps me a whole lot and I really appreciate it. So let's get started on unboxing the Hero 11 Black. All right, so the first thing we'll notice, this has a cardboard outer shell on it, but on the inside is this nice case. So GoPro started shipping the case with the Hero 10, and it's a great idea. It keeps everything in one place. So the way to open this is gonna be this strip right here on the bottom, and you're just gonna pull this across. And then you're gonna open this and we're gonna slide it out. We're gonna unzip this. And so this is just the basic uh, GoPro Hero 11 black kit. So inside here, up here, we have some instructions and it does note your camera must be updated before you can use it. So I will go through those instructions in a little bit here. We're gonna set that aside. And this right here shows you some basic items, such as how to hook up the cable, how to open the door, how to put in the battery. And on the back side, there's some nice GoPro stickers and it talks about the mounts, which I'm gonna go through as well. It's got some good tips here for the best cold weather performance. And then finally, you've got a whole uh, paper manual here. You can go through this if you wanna learn a little more about the warranty and what that covers. We'll set that aside as well. So in here, you do have the USB to USB-C cable. And right here is the battery. So the nice thing about the Hero 11 Black is this ships with the Enduro battery. So the Enduro battery, GoPro says, offers about 30% longer performance. And this battery right here is good in cold weather. So with the traditional GoPro battery, it would not last long in cold weather or it wouldn't work at all if it was really cold. Your camera would power on and power off right away. So this battery right here is great. I'm glad GoPro is including this with their new cameras. Which by the way, if you own the Hero 9 or Hero 10 and you decide to upgrade to the 11, the batteries from the 9 and the 10 are compatible with the 11. But do note if they're not the white Enduro battery, if they're the blue ones, they will not have that same performance and they definitely won't have the cold weather performance that the Enduro battery has. But if you're shooting in normal conditions, those batteries are great from the nine and 10, you can still use them in here. We've got a couple mounts in here. So this mount here is one of the basic ones. I'll show you how to use this a little bit later. And down here we have one of the sticky mounts. It's a curved sticky mount. This particular mount is good if you have a curvature on a car, like a hood or other part of the car that matches up. You can use this and stick it on a car, but do note the surface has to be clean and dirt free before you stick it. Otherwise this mount could detach and you could lose your GoPro or get it heavily damaged. Now you also have this thumb screw that comes with it down here. And I will show you how to use the thumb screw. And then finally, of course, the most exciting item in here, it's our Hero 11 Black. So we're gonna pull off this paper here. 
It's got a pretty strong adhesive on it. And we're going to have these stickers that we'll want to pull off, the plastics. There's going to be one here on the lens cover. There's going to be one here on the front facing LCD. And then there's going to be one here on the back. And GoPro, once again, emphasizes that your camera must be updated before you can use it. And this is important because GoPro typically releases their new firmware version on the day they release the camera. So these cameras, of course, were packaged and shipped and ready for sale before they had released that final firmware revision. And usually that initial firmware includes the latest and greatest features that GoPro offers on the camera. So you definitely want to make sure you upgrade to that. Now, before we power on the camera, I want to show you a couple different features and buttons on this camera. So first of all, this top button here, this is the record button. So anytime your camera's on and you want to hit record or take a photo or start a time lapse, you're going to push this right here. On the side, we have the mode button. That's right below the 11 black. The mode is going to be what you use to toggle between the different modes, such as video, photo, time lapse, etc. On the bottom here, we have the legs, which you're going to use for mounting your GoPro. And the nice thing about these is these tuck away on this camera. So you can unfold them. If you don't want to use it on a mount, you can tuck them away. And it's nice and level on the bottom here. But anytime you want to attach them to a mount, you do want to fold them down. And then the way you'll attach it is you'll put it on here. You'll line it up. And what you want to do when you're mounting this, you want to make sure where the thumb screw goes in that this doesn't line up with the battery door. So the battery door is over here on this side. That way you don't have to take all of this off when you have to swap the battery out or when you want to put in your micro SD card, which the micro SD card slot is right here on the side. I'll show you how to put in the micro SD card a little bit later. And we'll also put the battery in here a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to close that. So yeah, you want the silver end of the mount facing toward the battery door because the thumb screw is going to go in on the opposite side. And our thumb screw is going to go in just like this. And you can screw that nice and tight. And we're going to hold this mount in place while we tighten it. So what I want to demonstrate here is I want to demonstrate how to attach this to one of these types of mounts. So all you have to do when you want to attach it is you want to lift up the rubber here. The rubber normally is sitting flush, but you want to pop it up. And then what you want to do is you want to slide this in. It's going to click into place and you can push the rubber down. And the rubber is going to help hold that into place so that it doesn't easily become detached from the mount. But when you want to detach it again, all you have to do is lift the rubber, squeeze these together, and then it's going to slide right back out. Just like that. What I would like to do next is I want to put in the battery and I want to power this on. So I do already own a couple Enduro batteries and I'm going to put that one in because it's going to prompt us for that firmware update. And I want to make sure I have a fully charged battery for that because if not, it may not let us proceed with that. So that's a helpful tip is you may need to charge this battery first before you can do the firmware update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of my Duro batteries over here. And the way you're going to put the battery in is the contacts here are going to go up toward the top of the camera. So the GoPro is going to be facing away from you if you're putting it in from the backside. And another way of looking at this is right here. I'm just going to pop it in gently. It's going to click into place. And whenever you need to pull the battery out, there's this nice tab right here. You can pull on to get the battery out. And it's also worth noting that down here is the USB-C port. That's where your cable right here can plug in. You can connect it to a computer to charge the GoPro or to get data off the micro SD card. And speaking of micro SD card, I would like to add that right now as well. So this version of the GoPro did not come with a micro SD card, but there are versions you can buy that do come with that as part of the bundle. 
So I've got my SanDisk Extreme card here, and we're gonna put this in. And when you're inserting the card, you're gonna want the text facing toward the battery on the card. If you have it facing the other way, it won't go in, or you'll end up breaking the card if you try to force it in. So make sure the writing on the card faces toward the battery. And you're gonna push down here, and it's gonna click into place. So when it's inserted, it'll be down in there and you won't be able to see it. It can be a little bit tricky getting this in and back out because it is pretty small. It is a micro SD card. So what you have to do is you just gotta click here on the top of it and then it's gonna pop back up. So for now, I'm gonna put this back in and we're gonna close the door. And as far as my recommended size for a micro SD card, I do recommend getting at least a 256 gigabyte you can technically film footage on a 32 or 64 gigabyte, but that card will fill up rather quickly. And it's disappointing to be in the middle of an adventure and have your micro SD card fill up on you because you probably would have a lot more footage you'd wanna film. And if you're in the middle of an adventure, you're gonna miss out on that. Or you're gonna have to delete stuff on the card. So I recommend having at least a 256 gigabyte. And I will link to this particular one below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch cameras briefly because when I power this on, there's going to be that prompt for the firmware update and I want you to be able to see how to connect it to the Quick App to do the update. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna power on the GoPro and I'm gonna show you the first menu that you're gonna see here. First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna prompt you for your language. So you're gonna hit the check mark here once you've selected your language. And what you can do next is you're gonna accept the legal agreement. It does give you the link if you wanna read that. You're gonna click agree. And GPS, I typically am gonna keep that off because that does drain the battery pretty quickly. So I'm gonna hit off. All right, so this next stage, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you've installed the Quick App on your phone. The Quick App you can get from the Android or Apple iOS store. So we've got the Quick App up here. Once you've installed it, you're gonna see this right here. And what you can do is you want to make sure you leave your camera on. And then we wanna go down here. We wanna click where it says GoPro. So right now it's got my current Hero 10 map to it. We need to go up here to the plus camera symbol. This is gonna be for adding a new camera. And it's gonna tell us that it found the Hero 11 black. So we're gonna click connect camera. It's gonna prompt you to do the pairing process. We're gonna click pair. The camera's gonna beep as the Bluetooth connects. All right, it's gonna give us a camera paired message and it's gonna prompt you to name it here. I'm gonna take away the I and I'm gonna name it Hero 11 Black. I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna click save name. And here it's gonna give us the downloading latest features and improvements. This would be the uh, firmware update. And the download can take a little bit depending on your internet or cellular connection. Generally, the file's not too big, so it doesn't take too long. So while this is downloading, uh, GoPro typically releases firmware updates about once a month when a camera's brand new for about the first four or five months. So something to keep in mind, you wanna keep that firmware up to date for the best experience and features. All right, so we're gonna click continue now. And now it's gonna connect to the Wi-Fi. We're gonna click join. We're gonna click continue here. We're gonna accept and continue. All right, so now it's gonna transfer the update to the camera. And that's where it is important that you have a micro SD card in your slot. Cause if you don't have a micro SD card in there, it's usually going to error out with the firmware cause it needs a place to put the firmware update while it's installing it. But the transfer does go very quickly because there's a direct Wi-Fi connection between your phone and your camera. And that goes very fast. And now it's gonna install the update. And typically I find the firmware update takes about one to two minutes. You do wanna make sure you leave your camera on and that you don't leave the app on your phone. And it does tell you here your GoPro is gonna power off and on a few times during the update. And we're gonna get the updating here. And especially that first initial firmware update, I find this one takes the longest of all of them. 
sometimes two to three minutes. I think on the Hero 10, that first update took about two to three minutes. So it did the first reboot there. All right, that beep is a good sound. And update is complete. And then the phone eventually is going to catch up and it's gonna say it's complete on the phone. That's something to keep in mind. I've found that the phone often delays by anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds with acknowledging that the firmware update finished. So I'm gonna let that acknowledge that it finished here and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Excellent. All right, so it's gonna tell you update's complete when you can see the live view from the camera on your rear screen. And we're gonna click I'll do this later. All right, so we're gonna go back to the other camera now and we're gonna dive into setting up this GoPro. So the first thing you see here is this easy mode button and it says swipe down to change to pro mode in the dashboard. So we are gonna change it to pro mode. Even if you're a beginner with this camera, the pro mode offers you a lot of options and a lot of those are gonna be necessary to get the very best footage from this camera. So we're gonna swipe down and we're gonna swipe down again. We're gonna do the initial general menu setup items first. So we're gonna swipe down here and I'm gonna go through what each of these buttons are so that you can know and understand what each of these do. So this first one here is the voice control. So if you decide to use the voice control, you're gonna select the language. I would say yes, because I speak English. And then that activates it. So this is if you want to use voice control to operate your GoPro. You can do GoPro record, you can do GoPro stop. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of different commands. Now I don't use that because my concern is I might accidentally start it recording or stop it recording when I don't want to. So I typically keep that disabled, but if you wanna use that, then by all means, that option is there and available. The next button here is to control the audio for the beeps. So if you toggle it off, there will be no beeps. And if you toggle it on, there's gonna be beeps. So I generally like to have the beeps on. It helps me know that when I push the button that it actually started recording, and then when I stop the button that it actually stopped recording. So I like to keep the beeps on. The next symbol here with the rabbit, that is the quick capture. So quick capture is where you can turn on the camera using the record button. So if you don't push it on here first, you can push this and it's gonna immediately start doing whatever your last mode was which generally that's gonna be video for most people. So quick capture, I like to keep that on because sometimes I just wanna push the single button. When quick capture's on, all you do is press the button there and it starts recording. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna push it again and then it'll power off that way. So I'm gonna turn it back on with the power button here like normal. And we're gonna go back to that menu. So the next symbol here is if you want to lock your screen, you do that and then to unlock it, you press it back off. This can be useful in certain situations, like especially if you're underwater because water can really mess with this. So if you're recording underwater, I recommend locking the screen while you're recording and then you can unlock the screen when you're done. Uh, this next button down here, if you click it, it's gonna be the front screen option. So here you can decide what you'd like to show on the front screen. If you don't want anything to show, you can do that. Now you might say, why would I wanna turn off my front screen? The biggest reason is if you wanna save battery life. Generally though, I do keep the front screen on because if the camera's facing toward me and I'm talking to the camera, I wanna be able to see what I'm capturing. So you can also go here, this will show the status only. It's gonna look something like that. It's gonna like show what mode you're in, how many items you've recorded, that type of thing. So generally, you're gonna to wanna to pick the actual screen or the full screen. I generally like to do the full screen. I find that's most useful. So I'm gonna select full screen. And to give you an idea what that looks like, this is what the full screen looks like when you have it on there. And it tells you your mode down here, tells you your speed, your low light. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna go back to that. And this next option is to keep the orientation locked. So if you do that, when you turn the camera like this, it's not going to change. 
But if you don't keep it locked, when you turn the camera, the orientation is gonna go vertical or horizontal, depending on how the camera's facing. So it's gonna do that, or it's gonna go this way. Now, I generally like to keep it locked. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to that menu and I'm going to lock it. I like the screen to keep that orientation of horizontal uh, because with some of the new features on here that I'll go over, you can easily get vertical video out of the recording from horizontal. And I think that's the best way to go about doing so with this camera. The next option here is the easy controls will be disabled when you switch to the max lens mode. So max lens mod is a mod that you can attach to this. If you already own it, it's compatible with the Hero 9, 10, and now the 11 black. So we're gonna swipe over here and we're gonna get to a few more settings here. So video mode, we wanna click on this and we wanna make sure it's set to highest quality. The quality is gonna really matter and you don't want it on the extended battery because the quality is gonna be less. And when you're capturing footage with this really nice camera, my preference is to have it in the highest quality mode possible. You wanna capture the best looking footage. So I recommend keeping it there at highest quality. And down here where it says controls, we're gonna click on that and we're gonna go up here to pro. That's gonna give you all of the options unlocked and available for you to customize as you want to which I'm gonna go through all of those and I'm gonna show you how I recommend customizing them for no edit footage. And then here, we're gonna click in the preference menu. And for the auto upload here, this is gonna be if your camera uploads your clips and your photos automatically to GoPro Cloud. So if you are a GoPro subscriber, you may want to do this. When you plug it in to charge it, this camera will start uploading that to the cloud. Now we're not gonna go through that today, but if you are a GoPro subscriber, I do recommend setting that up as that's a great way to back up your footage and GoPro does offer unlimited storage. For wireless connections, we wanna make sure those are turned on. Those are gonna be important anytime you wanna connect this camera to a remote or the Volta or when you wanna do a firmware update. And down here are just some of the connect options. So anytime you need to connect a device, the two options that I mentioned, the remote and the Volta are here, and then also the quick app. So we of course did that at the beginning because that was a requirement in order to set up the camera. And we're gonna go back here, go to the next menu. So on the general menu, there's gonna be a few settings here that I recommend changing. So here's where you can customize the beep volume. I generally keep it at low or medium. If you want it high, you can do that. But high is legitimately pretty loud. So I recommend medium or low. Generally, I like medium. It's kind of a happy medium uh, without being too loud. So I like doing that. The default preset allows you to customize what it's gonna be when you turn on the camera each time after it's powered off. So you could do the last used, you could do last used video, last used photo, or last used time-lapse. Generally, I do last used video simply because this camera is used for video most of the time. So it makes sense to have that here. You can do your auto power off. Uh, generally, I recommend keeping this at five minutes. So if your GoPro is idle, if it's powered on, nothing's happening, you're not recording, you're not interacting with it at all, it's gonna power off after the amount of time you set here. I generally keep it at five minutes, that way in case I accidentally power it on, it's gonna power off and it's not gonna waste my battery. So I'm gonna keep it at five minutes. LEDs, you can do all on, you can do all off, you can do front off only. Generally, I just keep them all on. It's helpful to know what's recording and when it's recording. For anti-flicker, this is gonna depend on what region you're located in in the world. Here in the United States, our standard is 60 Hertz, but there are several countries where it's 50 Hertz. So, what you set this to is also going to affect your frame rates. So when you set it to 60 hertz, you're gonna see 24, 30, 60, 120, and 240. And of course 480, because you can do 480 frames per second in the 1080p mode. If you set it to 50, you're gonna see the frame rates like 25, 30, 50, 100. 
So you want to make sure this matches up to the broadcast standard of your country. So in my case, I'm going to set it to 60. All right, so that's everything under the general menu. I'm going to go back now. And the GPS, we turned that off earlier. If you do want it on, it's going to tag the location you were at when you did your video or pictures, which can be useful later on. Uh, let's say you explored a national park and you wanted to know exactly where you got some of the footage. I recommend it for something like that. But otherwise, generally I recommend keeping it off because it's going to save battery power. That's the voice control menu here. So we already talked about that. This has a little more detailed settings like here under commands. You can click on that. And it gives you a list of commands that you can say to the camera for it to do these different things. But again, I recommend keeping the voice off. It does work great, but it's just not something I use. If you want to use it, great. You can turn it on and use it. For the displays, it's got a few more in-depth settings here as well. So orientation landscape. If you do want to do vertical video for some reason, you can set this to all. And when you do that, it's going to power off. And then it's going to, it's going to do that for you after you power it back on. But we're going to go back into here. I generally recommend keeping the orientation set to landscape. For the screensaver rear, the default is one minute. So that's going to be this screen right here will go off after one minute to save some power because the display does eat up a lot of power. That's going to be one of the biggest battery power draws. So I recommend keeping that at one minute. The brightness here, that is important as well. Generally, I keep it at the 50%. I find that works pretty well, but you can put this all the way up to 100. You can put it way down dark, all the way down to about 10%. So I'm going to put this back to 50. I find that works best for me. And then rear screen grid, this is off by default, but I actually like the grid. I like having that rule of thirds because it helps me frame my shot. So you can see the grid lines here now. I find that to be very useful. So I like having the grid on. That's a preference item. If you don't want that on, you can just keep it off, but I recommend having it on. It helps a lot. We are almost through the settings here. So you're going to have language, which uh, we set initially when we set up the camera. You're going to have date and time which it's going to generally auto pull through the quick app. Uh, you can change this to 24 hour time if you want to, which generally I do like the 24 hour time. So I'm going to set that there. And then your time zone, your daylight savings time, you can adjust that as well. And here's the mods screen. So here uh, I generally have it show the max lens mod. If you're not ever going to use the max lens mod, you can click hide here but I like to have it show because then it enables that mode when you attach it to your camera. And then the media mod, if you own the media mod, this right here, uh, that's going to say not applicable when it's not connected, but when the media mod is connected, it's going to show here and it's going to give some additional options. We'll talk about the media mod a little bit more later on. And then under the about GoPro updates is simply going to prompt you to connect it to the quick app and it's going to check for an update. And then if you ever need your camera's serial number, the place you can get that is right here where it says camera info. It's going to give the serial number and it's also going to show the firmware version. So you can also find it in the battery door down here along the side, but it's very difficult to read in there. It's a very tiny font. And so I recommend getting it here under this menu. And then it also has the battery info. So it's going to tell you the battery help. It's going to tell you if your battery type is compatible. So generally, you're not going to be able to fit a battery that's not compatible inside this camera. But it is possible that there could be third party batteries that may not be compatible. So this will show you that if that's the case. And for battery health, you know, over time, as you use batteries, their health is going to decrease. This is a good way to check that. Uh, these batteries, I've put them through a ton of charges and they're still going strong with excellent. but it's good to check that if you feel like your battery is losing power quicker, you can go here and check that. All right, in this regulatory menu, 
There's not really any settings on this. It just shows you those symbols and the various regulatory standards that it complies with. And then down here, if you ever need to reset your camera or format your micro SD card, this is gonna be where you find those options. And there's the option to reset your presets and the option to reset camera tips. And then you can also do a full factory reset. Sometimes if your camera becomes buggy, it is necessary to do a factory reset, but I recommend doing that as a last resort. I recommend formatting the micro SD card, resetting the presets and resetting the camera tips first before you do the entire factory reset. And by the way, formatting a micro SD card is a great idea the first time you put the card into your GoPro, even if that card is brand new. I find that works best. And generally I like to format my micro SD card about once a month or so. Of course, do make sure you have the files copied off your card uh, before you format it. Otherwise, it will delete all of those files on your card and you will not be able to get them back. So before you format, make sure to copy the data off. All right, so I know that menu was not the most exciting, but I wanted to go through that with you and make sure all those settings were clear. So now we can get to the fun stuff. I'm gonna go through what some of these controls are on this screen, and then we're gonna dive into the modes and get some of these modes set up so you're ready to go with this camera. All right, so let's talk about what these buttons are on this screen first. So this up here in the upper left corner, and by the way, if you click on the screen, if you want those to go away, just tap once and then tap again to get those options to come back. So this up here shows you how much time is left on your micro SD card. So the micro SD card I put in is 512 gigabytes and that 512 gigabyte card can hold a ton of footage. This is telling us it can hold 16 hours at 5.3K 30 frames per second. That is a massive amount of footage. Uh, like I said earlier, I recommend at least 256 gigabytes, but if you wanna go big, you can go up to the 512 and have plenty of space. This right here shows the mode that your camera's in up here in the center top. So right now I'm in video mode. If I was to switch it, that symbol's gonna change up there to the camera. And if I switch it again to the time-lapse mode, it's gonna show that symbol right there. But we're gonna go back to video. Up here shows the charge left on your battery. And the charge the battery shows will sometimes change when you change modes on your camera, so that is worth noting. So here, if I was to lower this to a different mode, like 2.7K, it's gonna drop to 73%, because that tends to use a little more battery power. But if I go back here to the standard 5.3K, it goes back to 75. So. That is important to note, there's not anything wrong with your battery, that is condition normal. Over here, this is our hyper smooth setting. So if we click on this, we've got four different options. You can have hyper smooth off, which I don't ever recommend because you wanna have stabilization for your footage. You can have it on, and on is gonna be kind of that lower basic stabilization. It's not gonna be anything too high, but it is gonna provide some stabilization this can be great if you want your audience to feel that action a little more, like say you're mountain biking, doing some jumps, that type of thing. It'll make it a little bit less smooth. And then the next option here is boost. Boost is gonna be the highest consistent stabilization. So if you have it set to boost, it's gonna stay extra stable. And so even when you're doing stuff that's really rough, this is gonna stay really, really stable, which is pretty amazing, the boost is. And then you can also do auto boost. If you do auto boost, basically this is gonna be in the normal on mode for HyperSmooth 5.0. But when you do auto boost, if you get to a part in your video where things are just really shaken with the camera, it's gonna do the auto boost automatically. So I recommend setting it to auto boost, especially if you want clips that you can share right out of the camera and don't have to edit. So we're gonna set this to auto boost. And down here, when it's not set to auto boost, you're gonna have a zoom function. I'm gonna go back and show you that. I don't recommend doing the zoom because you're not gonna get the full resolution out of this. It's gonna crop. And if you want to crop, it's just better to do it later on when you're editing. Even if you wanna do a quick edit with the quick app, it's gonna be a lot better. Your footage in the end is gonna give you more flexibility if you wait to crop it later on. So I recommend keeping that set to 1x. And also, if you wanna change this, you can press and hold on this, 
and it's gonna let you customize what this button has. So you've got a bunch of different options here. So what I recommend doing is I recommend setting this to the option here that you'd like to switch between the most in your modes. Uh, so maybe that would be color for you, maybe it would be sharpness, you can do the ISOs, you can do a bunch of stuff. The mode that's gonna be most useful for me is probably this EV comp one. And that's gonna then show there with that new symbol. And then over here on the left is the 1X button, and this actually controls your frame rate. So if you want this at 1X normal speed, you can keep it at 1X, either 24 frames per second or 30. Both of those are gonna be a normal speed, which by the way, 24 frames per second is basically a cinematic standard. That's gonna be what you see in a lot of movies if you live in the United States. And 30 frames per second is gonna be a TV show standard. So if you go and watch a TV show, most of the time that's gonna be in 30 frames per second. 24 and 30 frames per second are both popular resolutions with the GoPro. And generally they're gonna be what you want your finished product shared as. Most GoPro users are gonna use 30 frames per second. Now I have a liking for the 24 because I like to do some really cinematic stuff with this, but if you just want a clip to take out of your GoPro quick and share, 30 frames per second is gonna be the normal standard. So I'm gonna keep it at 30. But when you go up here, you can set it to 60 frames per second and it's gonna tell you this is 2X. And that's because when you go later on to edit, if you wanna slow this down in the quick app and do some slow-mo for part of your clip, you wanna film it in 60 frames per second and that's gonna give you more flexibility to slow it down. If you film in 30, it's gonna look choppy when you slow it down in your app. But if you do 60 and then cut the time in half for the speed, it's gonna be very smooth, beautiful slow motion. So for now, we're gonna keep this at 1X. And there is a different way you can set the modes too for slow motion. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit here. And then finally, this button in the lower left that has the W, this is gonna let you change your lenses. So the GoPro has five different lens options in most modes. And those go from linear plus horizon lock, which by the way, you can do the full 360 degree rotation now. And it's gonna keep that horizon locked, which is pretty cool. So you can flip your camera like this and it's gonna stay locked. So that is pretty cool. Now the 360 degree lock is not available in all modes, but it is available in the linear mode. And that's because technically what it's doing is it's cropping this slightly and it's got enough room to spin all the way around because the footage that's being captured by the sensor is bigger than what this mode is showing. So with this cropped in, the camera can go all the way around. Now on the Hero 10, you could only go to about 27 degrees here before it would jump back like that. So the 360 degree in that linear plus horizon lock mode is very impressive and that's very useful for a lot of activities. You can also do linear mode and this would not have the horizon lock. So this is gonna be what it actually looks like. You can do wide mode, which is gonna go a little wider. You can do super view mode, which is gonna be 16 millimeter equivalent. And finally, you can do hyper view mode, which is a new mode on the Hero 11 Black. And this is 12 millimeter. This mode is very wide and generally you're probably not gonna to wanna to use this if someone's face is in there uh, because the moment someone gets toward one of the edges here, toward one of these edges, it's gonna really, really distort. But a great use case for this would be like if you're riding a motorcycle, a bicycle, downhill skiing, and you really want that wide field of view, Hyperview is a great mode for that. Most people, when you're filming clips that you don't wanna edit, uh, you're generally gonna to wanna to do wide or linear plus horizon lock. So I'm gonna keep this in middle of the road wide right now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set some of our presets. So the way you do that is you click down here at the bottom, just tap it once, and it's gonna bring up this menu here. So it's already got several pre-configured presets on here. I'm gonna go down through a couple of these and help you customize these a little further for the best no edit footage. So the first mode here is gonna be that standard mode. Generally, I recommend keeping this to the mode you're gonna use most often. So 5.3K30 
is a great mode to use because you're going to get the highest resolution out of the camera. And it's going to be in that 30 frames per second, which is ready to share. So you click on the pencil there and you can dive into this menu and change a bunch of options. So here for hyper smooth, if you wanted to set that to auto boost, this is where you can do that. And it's going to give you that warning message that dynamic cropping takes effect after capture and cannot be seen in the live view on the screen. So it is going to do some cropping when it's moving around like this for that auto boost, because if it has to boost it, it needs to crop in a little bit to make it look smooth. So that is something to keep in mind. But generally, this is going to work best for you if you want to do a no edit clip. Scheduled capture, if you wanted to schedule this camera to turn on to capture something, you can click here and you can set a time for it to do that capture. So you return it on here and then you could set six o'clock tomorrow morning. Let's say you wanted this to get a sunrise. You could set it to six here and you would want to make sure that your uh, PM and AM are proper or if you're in 24 hours like myself, you know, you can set the six right there and it's going to be 6 a.m. And all you have to do is tap back out of that and this camera can be powered off and it's going to power on at 6 a.m. But of course, something to keep in mind is your battery could run out. So you would want some type of external battery supply or power pack to plug into this to an outlet, which I'm going to talk about that later with accessories that I recommend. And that's going to be one of those. And I'll tell you about the one that I use and how I use it. But generally, I find myself not using scheduled capture. So I'm going to turn that back off here. And duration, you can also set a limit. So if you wanted it to film for three hours, you could set it all the way up to that. Uh, if you want it to film with no limit, which is generally going to be a good default, you would keep it at no limit. You can customize it from no limit. You can do 30 seconds. You can do one minute, five, 15. You got a lot of different options here. I'm going to keep it at no limit though. Hindsight is a neat feature. So hindsight is useful. Let's say if you're at a sporting game for your children or you're watching uh, people do jumps, skateboarding, you can set this here to 15 seconds or 30 seconds. And what you do is if you're waiting for a cool moment to happen, you want to have this set up and ready to go. And you're just going to have it on and ready to roll. So you could be back. Let's go back to this mode. You could be right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to queue up the time here at the top. So it's going to queue that all the way up to 30 seconds. And once it gets to the 30 seconds, it's going to maintain the previous 30 seconds of footage. So when you hit record, it's going to start from 30 seconds ago. So that's pretty cool. Let's say you're watching uh, your child play basketball and your child makes a fabulous three pointer. And let's say you didn't have your camera recording because you didn't want to have it recording for a couple hours to capture that one 30 second clip. Right after your child makes that three pointer, you can hit this and it's going to start recording. So it's going to go back and it's going to capture that prior 30 seconds. And it's going to put that into a clip here. We're going to click stop here. When you go back to review that clip, it's to the 30 seconds. It's going to maintain the previous 30 seconds of footage. You're going to hear me talking so here. You hit record, it's going to start. So that is pretty cool. Uh, if you are using it in a situation where that benefits, I definitely recommend checking that out. We're going to go back into our mode here. But hindsight, it is worth noting that your camera does have to be powered on and it does use quite a bit of battery power. So unless you're in a setting where you would benefit greatly from that, I generally recommend keeping it off. In timer, you can do a little bit of a delay. Let's say you wanted to get into a shot like if you have the setup on a tripod and you're going to start talking to it, you could do a three second or a 10 second delay. And that means after you tap this, it's going to wait either three seconds or 10 seconds to start recording. Generally, I keep that off, but there are settings where you may want to have that on. ProTuner where there are some very key settings that are going to help you get really fabulous footage from this camera. So one of those new features on the GoPro Hero 11 is 10 bit video. So if you don't know what 10-bit means versus 8-bit, 
All the GoPros up until now have had 8-bit video. It has 16 million different color shades on it, which I know sounds like a lot, but 10-bit offers 1 billion with a B color shades. So 10-bit is a whole lot more colors than what the previous GoPros have featured. And I consider this one of the best features of this Hero 11. So for the 10-bit, we're gonna turn this on because I wanna get the best possible footage out of this and it's gonna look a lot better. Now it is important to note that the 10-bit, you cannot use in all the modes on here. Keep that in mind. Uh, you cannot use it with all modes, but if it's not available in the mode you're in, it will be grayed out here. GoPro is good about graying out stuff that's not available for the mode that you wanna use. For bitrate, we definitely wanna set this to high. And on the Hero 11, the bitrate for the highest is now 120 megabits per second, which is great quality footage. I believe on the Hero 10, that was 100 megabits per second. So we are gonna get a little bit more quality out of this, which is great. The footage is gonna look even better. And that's gonna be in 4K and up resolutions. For the shutter, generally you're gonna to wanna to keep that set to auto. The only time where you wouldn't want it at auto is if you're using ND filters. And I'm not gonna talk about ND filters today. That's a more advanced feature, but I do have a video that talks about them if you wanna check it out above. For the EV comp, I generally recommend keeping this set to zero if you just want a clip that you can share out of the camera. If you are in a really bright environment, it can be beneficial to set this down to the negative five. You're gonna get more details in the clouds when you do that. That's especially where you're gonna notice it. It's gonna look less washed out and white. So that's one setting where I would keep it at negative five. But otherwise, you're generally gonna be okay keeping that set to the default of zero. For the white balance, you're generally gonna be good keeping that set to auto. If you are shooting in a sunset, that golden hour, then you may wanna set this up to 6,500K. It's gonna make your footage look even better. But generally for daytime shooting, you can keep it at auto, or you could do 5,000 or 5,500K if it's a sunny day out. Now for the ISO min and max, this is pretty important. For the ISO min, you wanna have this set to 100. But for the ISO max, 1600 is not a great option. So if you're filming in low lighting, 1600 is great. It will give you footage that's better lit, but that footage is gonna have a lot of noise and it's not gonna look good. So noise is that grain and that type of footage is basically unusable. So what I recommend for ISO max is set this to 800. You don't want it to go any higher than that. You wanna have footage that you can still use when you're done filming and 800 is gonna give you that. For sharpness, for clips you wanna share right out of the camera, I recommend keeping that at medium or low. You don't wanna go high. High is, is too sharp, and it's gonna to tend to make your footage not look so good. So if you're gonna edit any footage, I recommend putting sharp to low, but if you want a clip to share right out of the camera, keep it set to medium. For color, you do have three options. You have flat. Flat is gonna be if you wanna edit that footage later on, but if you wanna do the clips to share straight out of the camera, you wanna keep it at natural or vibrant. Now vibrant is gonna give you that really deep saturated footage that GoPro is, is known for. I generally recommend keeping it at natural. Natural is basically going to make your environment look exactly as it does when you're filming. And I find that works best for clips to share. If you really want that deep saturation, then do vibrant. For the raw audio, you're gonna generally want that off unless you wanna have the extra audio tracks. And that can be useful if you're doing audio editing on it, but for the sake of today's video, we're not talking about editing footage. Uh, we're just looking at clips that come straight out of the camera. We're gonna select off there. For the wind, I generally recommend keeping this at auto. The microphones have come a long way in the GoPro, but if you need really good audio, then you're gonna wanna invest in the media mod because a media mod has some additional built-in microphones, which are great. And it also offers you the option of plugging in a microphone. So you can plug in an external microphone down here where there's a 3.5 millimeter jack. Hold that up so you can see it. And that's what I use when I really want good audio. Like if I'm vlogging and talking to the camera, I use the DJI wireless mic to hook into that. That is my favorite microphone set. Uh, if you haven't checked this out before, 
I love this one. It is a bit pricey, so you wanna make sure that you're gonna really get the most benefit out of that. But if you really need a good wireless mic, that one's a great option. Uh, there are some other options like the Rode Wireless Go that I've used, and that one is also good. But for wind reduction, I generally recommend keeping it at auto if you're gonna use the audio out of this camera. But if you're doing a project or a vlog where there's gonna be a lot of factors that are dependent upon sound, like if you're gonna be talking a lot, then I do recommend the media mod and or an external microphone connected to the media mod. Because when sound plays an important role in your project, you wanna make sure you have the very best. And the media mod will not apply because we don't have it connected to the media mod. When we do have it connected, this will not be grayed out and you'll be able to change the audio feed for it. And then these are the shortcuts we went over on the main screen. Like I said with those, I keep those at default except that lower right, I did set it to EV comp because that's gonna be the one that I wanna to toggle the most directly from that screen. So the next mode we're gonna talk about here is this full frame mode. Now this full frame mode is an eight by seven resolution. And if you haven't heard of eight by seven resolution before, that's because it's not exactly common. Uh, this is pretty neat that GoPro built this into the Hero 11. And even though we're not talking about best settings for editing footage today, this full frame mode is worth talking about because this does offer you a lot of flexibility later on. So what it does is it gives you footage that is more square in nature. And then later on when you're editing, you can more so adjust the up and down to make it 16 by nine. You can make it a vertical nine by 16. Like if you wanna do a YouTube short from your footage, you also can do the Instagram and TikTok resolutions from that. Uh, so the great thing is you can do that without losing the resolution of the footage. So when you do your crop on that, you're not gonna reduce it to get the clip that you want from that original footage. So that is pretty cool. So I recommend having the full frame mode here as a preset, because there probably will be times you want to use it. And then maybe you wanna do a quick edit on the quick app later on. Which for that, you cannot do boost for the hyper smooth because it's using the entire sensor. But you can have hyper smooth turned on or off. I recommend keeping it on. Uh, there's no reason not to have it on in that mode. And then the rest of these settings are ones we already talked about. For 10-bit video, I definitely recommend turning that on to get the most out of that resolution. Keep that bit rate high, uh, shutter auto, white balance can be auto. And here I recommend putting the ISO max to 800 once again. Uh, there's not really any modes where you wanna go over that except occasionally in the night lapse mode, which we'll talk about later but the rest of these settings, I recommend keeping those all at the defaults, what we talked about earlier. And then the other mode that I recommend having is I recommend having a cinematic mode. So for that, for cinematic, I recommend doing 5.3K 24 frames per second. And you can do the eight by seven if you wanna have a lot of cropping flexibility later on when you're editing uh, to frame that footage exactly as you want it. Uh, but generally I'm gonna stick with the 16 by nine because we're doing this with the intention that you want to share the clip right out of the camera. And for the lens, for the cinematic, I wanna keep that at linear or linear plus horizon lock. Generally I'm gonna keep it at linear plus horizon lock for this because that horizon lock is gonna make it look most cinematic in most cases. Hyper smooth, I'm generally gonna keep that on. And then the rest of these settings we talked about here for ProTune, you definitely wanna have the 10-bit set to on. You wanna get the best quality color spectrum there. And bitrate, you wanna set that to high. We'll keep shutter auto. We'll keep all the rest of these settings as they are, except the ISO max. We're gonna bump that down here to 800. Sharpness medium, color natural. And we'll keep the audio settings the same as well. So for this activity mode, this one I find I don't necessarily use because usually whatever I'm doing is gonna be covered by the standard, the full frame, the cinematic, or the slow-mo. But there is an activity mode, so whatever you wanna customize that to, you can do that as well. And that just gives you another preset that you can toggle between. But I do want to set up the slow-mo mode down here because that is an important one. So generally for slow-mo, I like to do 120 frames per second, which you'll see what options are available, by the way. 
So if I go back to 4K, you'll see the 240 frames per second is grayed out because that's only available in 2.7K. So like I said earlier, GoPro is good about graying out options. So right now in 2.7K, you can't use 30 or 24, but you can use 240, 120, or 60. And in 4K, you can use 120, 60, 30, or 24. So for slow motion, I recommend 4K 120 because that's going to give you the highest resolution with highest frame rate, kind of that happy medium. 240 frames per second does offer additional flexibility with slowing it down, but it's at the expense of having that 2.7K resolution, which is not as high quality as the 4K. And with 120 here, you can slow it down four times if your finished product is a 30 frames per second timeline. And that's gonna be the default option in the quick app. But if you're editing and your timeline is 24 frames per second, say on a computer, you can slow this down by five times. So that's pretty cool. For this, I generally recommend keeping the lens set to wide. The nice thing is you can do super view now in 4K 120. I don't believe you could do that on the Hero 10, but you cannot do hyper view here. And if you try to change it to that, it'll bump this down to 60 frames per second. So do note, sometimes when you select options that are not available for certain modes, it will auto adjust those. And then you gotta go back here and bump it up again. But for the lens, I generally recommend wide. Uh, that's kind of the, the happy medium. But Super is great if you're doing something like downhill skiing and you really wanna get that wide, wide field of view. That's pretty cool. And for this mode, I generally recommend keeping the HyperSmooth to on because when you slow it down by the four or five times, that has an additional smoothing effect on the footage. So really you don't need it any higher than the on. And that way you don't run the risk of some type of cropping happening with the auto boost. So for this mode, I recommend keeping it set to on. Now, something important to note, you can only do 4K 120 and 8-bit. 10-bit is not available for that yet. It's grayed out, it'll say not applicable. It's possible at some point GoPro may add that via a firmware update, but for now that's not an option. Bitrate, we wanna put that to high. We're gonna keep the rest of these set to their defaults, except ISO max, we wanna bump that down to the 800. Sharpness medium, color natural. And then like I said, if you want to set up this activity mode for a certain type of preset, you can do that as well. But I'm going to keep that as it is for now. So those are the video modes. So let's go over to that photo mode. We're gonna hit our mode button here on the side. And this is gonna take us to photo mode. So let's dive in here. You're gonna have a couple different options. You're gonna have photo, you're gonna have burst, and you're gonna have night photo. So I'm gonna go through these and uh, show you how to set these up for the best photo straight out of the GoPro. We're gonna click on the pencil there. For lens, I generally recommend keeping that to wide. It's gonna give you the widest field of view. If you do have a lot of human subjects in it though, you may wanna set it to linear to correct for that fisheye distortion. When you do this, you know, it's gonna have the fisheye there. That also could apply if you're in like a city with lots of buildings. You may wanna keep it at linear there as well. But generally I'm gonna do wide if it's a landscape photo, anything like that. For output, it's great to put it to super, to super photo. The GoPro is gonna automatically process that. And the GoPro does now have 27 megapixel photos. Megapixels don't mean everything, but in this case it is pretty nice and it does output pretty good images too. I've been very pleased with it so far. And you can also change the mode here. You can do the HDR, you can do the standard, or you can do the raw. If you wanna edit photos, you wanna set it to raw, and that's gonna give you a JPEG and a GPR. But if you want a photo straight out of the camera, keep it set to super photo. The Hero 11 Black is pretty good about determining what the best auto settings are for your photo. And when you do that, it's gonna gray out a lot of these ProTune options. You will still have white balance that you can adjust and sharpness, but generally I recommend leaving those alone. If you wanted more customization over the photo, what you would do here is output, you would go to raw, and this is gonna unlock all of these options here, except the lens. You'll be stuck with wide, you can't change that for raw photo, 
but RAW is going to be if you want to take that photo and edit it in the Quick App later on, or something like Lightroom. So if you want to, put it to RAW, and then that's going to give you a whole bunch of options here. And if you're shooting a RAW photo, you'll want to put the UV comp down to negative 5 to preserve some of those highlights. If it's a really bright day, you want to put it to negative 1. White balance, you can keep it at auto because you can change that when you edit. And for the ISO max, you're going to want to put that down to 800. You're not going to want to go higher than that or your photo is going to get pretty noisy. And sharpness, if you're going to edit it, I recommend keeping that at low because it's easier to add sharpness versus taking it away. And color, you would want to put that to flat. It's going to allow you a lot more color correction flexibility with the photo. And shortcuts down here will not apply to this. So for the burst photo, this is going to be if you wanted to take several photos in a row. If you're using the burst, you can adjust a whole bunch of these settings. So you could have it do three in one second. You could have it do five in one second, 10 in one second, 30, 30, 10 in three seconds, 30 in three seconds. Basically, there's a bunch of options here. This is going to be for one of those things where you're doing something that's changing quickly. Uh, maybe even where you're trying to pose a photo with uh, several people. You want to have a lot of photos you can flip through uh, to find the one where the fewest people have their eyes closed, something like that. Or if you want one with your kids and you want to make sure it's a photo where the kids are mostly smiling, you know, this is a great feature for that. Like 10 and 3 seconds, that's generally my happy medium for that. that I find that gives you the most usefulness out of this feature. And then you can, of course, change the output. It can be standard or raw. I generally recommend raw for this because you kind of want the most flexibility over those that you can have. So then down here, you want to change the ISO min and max. You want to keep the min at 100, max to 800. Sharpness to low and color to flat. That way you can pop it into the quick app and do your edits. Shortcuts will not apply here. And then for night photo, most of the settings GoPro offers by default here are going to be great for this. You do have a lot more control over a night photo if you do RAW. And I recommend doing RAW because it gives you the JPEG and the GPR. So if you do standard, it gives you the JPEG only. So when you do the RAW mode, you're going to get what the standard would have had anyway, plus a duplicate RAW file. So I recommend doing RAW there. And then a timer is good for night for a night photo because after you hit this, you want to have your camera holding really still for that. You don't want any shake because the night photos are very sensitive to that. They're going to come out very blurry if there's any bit of movement there. So you're going to want this setting someplace when you do that or on a tripod. And for EV comp, you don't want to change that for night photo. White balance, you can keep that to auto. ISO min and max. Generally, that's going to be a good upper end. If you do 1600, the photo is going to be too grainy and unusable in most cases. And generally for that night photo, if you're going to edit it, I recommend doing low and flat. But if you're not going to edit, you can do medium and natural. And down here's our shortcuts. All right, so those are the photo mode presets uh, that we've customized. We're going to go next to the time-lapse mode. So I'm going to show you some default settings if you want to get a time-lapse straight out of your camera. We're going to click down here. And the first setting is going to be for time warp. So time warp is very cool. I recommend customizing this. So for time warp, I recommend doing these 5.3K. On the Hero 10, you could only go as high as 4K, but now you can go to 5.3K. So I recommend doing that. Uh, that's going to give you the best, highest resolution, and then if you export it as 4K and it's scaled down a little, it's going to look extra good. Now, you can do this in the 4x3 photo mode as well, which is also cool. That's going to give you some flexibility if you want to reframe that. But for the sake of this, I'm going to keep it at 16x9. The lens, you also have some options here. You can do wide, you can do lin linear, or you can do linear plus horizon leveling. So I actually like the linear plus horizon leveling for this. I think it's good to keep that in this case. If you're doing a time warp someplace where you want like a wide field of view, something with a landscape, uh, that's going to generally be better. But if you're doing like a time warp in a city, someplace like that, I definitely recommend the linear plus horizon leveling. 
For the speed, I like keeping that at auto. GoPro does a good job of that auto speed. But you can customize this. You can do two times your speed, five times, 10 times, 15, all the way up to 30 times your speed. And the nice thing is it does the math for you here. So for each of these, it's gonna tell you how much it speeds up and stabilizes your video by. But I like to keep it at auto. Auto does a great job. So this is where you can use the toggle on that screen just to slow it down to real time if you want in the middle of your time warp, and then you can bump it right back up. And that's gonna be the button available down here when you're in time warp mode. I'll show you really quick what I mean by that. So that's gonna be this button down here in the lower right. If you click that, that's gonna do the speed ramp. You can set it to real speed or half speed. So that's real speed there. And then this is half speed. And then for the Pro Tune settings, I recommend changing the ISO max to 800. But the rest of these settings, you generally can leave alone for that. And it's gonna get you a great time warp straight out of the GoPro. Now GoPro with the Hero 11 have added some incredible modes here. The star trails, the light painting, and the vehicle lights. Super cool. To do those in post-production, it takes a lot of work. So the fact you can just do this straight out of the camera is phenomenal. So I only recommend some slight tweaks to these. For the trail length, I recommend keeping that set to long. You can also do max if you want really long star trails, but generally long is gonna be good. But max is great if you wanna like do the entire night and get the entire rotation of the stars, you can do that. I'm gonna keep it set to long. Resolution. I recommend doing the 5.3K. You wanna get the best out of it that you possibly can. The lens is gonna be wide by default, the format video, you can't change that. Uh, the shutter, you wanna keep that set to the 30 seconds. If it is a night where there's the moon in the sky, which can look kind of cool with the star trails, you wanna set it down to 10 seconds. And it tells you right here, the shutter will stay open, choose longer for darker shots. If it's a clear night and it's very dark where you are, you want to keep it at the 30 seconds. And I don't recommend doing the scheduled capture or duration for this. I do recommend keeping the timer at three. That's going to generally work best because you can hit the shutter button and then you can get back and not be touching the camera and shaking it. Because night modes are going to be very sensitive to any movement of the camera. Most of the protein settings are going to be grayed out. But the defaults that GoPro selected here of 800 for the ISO min and 800 for the max are great. I recommend leaving those just as they are. So for the light painting, this is also an incredible one. You wanna keep the trail length to max, that way whatever you're painting in that footage is gonna be there, all of it, it's not gonna get cut off. For resolution, you're gonna to wanna to have this at 5.3K. You're gonna have extra good quality footage. For the shutter, you wanna keep this at 0.5 seconds. And that's because you don't wanna let in too much light. Otherwise your light trails are gonna look kinda of blurred and not great. Or they're gonna to look too overexposed and they're not gonna be as sharp and well-defined. And that's where the ISO min and max come in here. You wanna keep those set to 100 because it's gonna make everything outside of your light trails nice and dark. It's gonna really make those stand out. So keep those set to 100. Next mode here is the vehicle lights. We're gonna click the pencil. And for the trail length, you wanna keep that short, generally. It's gonna capture the short light trails. It's gonna help the different vehicle lights stand out a little bit better. But if you're in a particular place where you're like looking down on a highway, you may wanna set it to long. That can look pretty cool. You can also do max, of course, which is gonna capture them for the longest time. Those are gonna be those continuous light trails, but Generally, you can play around with this, but generally short or long is gonna work best. I like keeping it at short. For the resolution, I recommend 5.3K. It's gonna give you the highest quality. Of course, these other options will be grayed out. The default shutter of two seconds is generally gonna be good for this, so I recommend keeping that. And then down here, the ISO min at 800, the ISO max at 800, that's also good. Uh, if you are in a city where it's really bright, you may wanna bump the ISO min and max down to 400, but generally 800 is gonna give you pretty good results. All right, now let's get into the time-lapse mode. So the time-lapse one down here 
If you want a time lapse that's ready to share out of the camera, those are the settings I'm going to go through today. I'm not going to go through the advanced settings. For the resolution, we're going to want to pick 5.3K, so it's the highest possible one. For the lens, you're going to want to usually do wide, but if you're doing a time lapse in a city or with objects where you don't want the fisheye, you'll want to do linear. But generally, you want to do wide because most time lapses are going to be landscapes, that type of thing. For format, you want to keep this a video. What that's going to do is it's going to take each of those individual photos and it's going to splice them together in the camera. It's going to give you a single .mp4 file that you can export at the end. For the interval, I generally recommend five seconds. Five seconds is a great interval for most time lapses. You can go all the way up to 60 minutes, which means it'll do one frame every 60 minutes. So that might be good if you had this hooked up outdoors with some type of continuous power. You wanted to like show a house being built over several days and months. That could be a use case for that. But generally for most use cases, if you want to do a couple hour time lapse, uh, let's say of a sunset or of the clouds going through the sky, a thunderstorm, I love capturing thunderstorms. Uh, the clouds are always so interesting. Five seconds is going to be a good interval. We're going to keep scheduled capture off, duration no limit. If you wanted to do like a three hour time lapse and you wanted to set it, you could do that here. It'll go all the way up to three and it'll tell you about how long your video would be at the end, which would be about a minute and 12 seconds. So the nice thing is this calculates now, which is great. Before you'd have to figure out those calculations and you know, Sometimes it can take a little bit uh, to figure that out. I'm going to keep the duration at no limit. All right, for protein settings, we want to make sure this is set to high. You want to get the highest quality time lapse. You want a lot of detail in there. EV comp, if it's a bright sunny day and you're trying to capture clouds, you're going to want to do negative 0.5. You're going to get a lot more detail in those clouds and it's going to be less washed out. If you're at the beach or someplace really bright, you might want to put this all the way down to negative one. That's going to capture better detail. But generally in most average settings, zero is going to work well here. White balance, you're generally going to be good keeping that at auto. The camera is going to adjust. But if you're doing a sunset, put it to 6500K. Otherwise, I recommend keeping it at auto. And the ISO min and max, Generally, for the best time lapse, you're going to want to keep these set to the same setting. And what I like is I like either 100 and 100 or 200 and 200. If you're doing a sunset or a sunrise, I recommend 200 and 200. If you're doing middle of the day and it's a bright day, I recommend 100 and 100. And the reason is you don't want that ISO automatically changing on you because it's going to suddenly do like a, a flicker in your time lapse and the lighting's going to change. So that's a really helpful tip. Uh, keeping it set to the same for these is going to give you best results. And sharpness, if it's going to be one you share straight out of the camera, I keep that at medium. And color of natural tends to work great. If you really want those colors to pop, you could do vibrant here. But natural, I find, works best. And shortcuts down here will not apply. And then finally, night lapse. So night lapse, it's a little bit tricky to get a good one to share out of the camera. If you're doing like stars on a really dark night, you're going to get a lot better results using the photo mode, which I have a whole video dedicated solely to filming night lapses. I've linked to it above. It'll show you all the ins and outs of that. And it'll show you my entire processing use from start to finish with the photo mode and the video mode. But if you want to do the video mode, I'm going to show you the best settings for that. So for resolution, once again, we want to do 5.3. And we're going to keep the lens at wide. We're going to do format of video. For the interval, we're going to keep that at auto because we're going to have the interval adjust to the shutter. So with the shutter here, if it is a really, really dark night, you're trying to capture the Milky Way and some stars and lots of stars in the sky, you're going to want to put this to 30 seconds. If it's not a really dark night, you're going to want to put this around 20 or 15. Like if you have a full moon in the sky, you're going to want to keep this around 15. If it's like a partial moon, you're going to want to keep it at around 20 seconds. But if there's no moon, 
you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have light interference, keep that at 30. And generally, I like to keep scheduled capture off and duration to no limit and timer to three seconds. The reason for the scheduled capture off is when you're doing a night lapse, if you have the shutter set to 30, it's gonna auto adjust the interval to be each individual frame is gonna be 30 seconds apart. So generally you're gonna to wanna to capture the entire night when you do that, because that's gonna give you the longest night lapse to work with. Because when each frame is 30 seconds apart, that's not gonna be a real long night lapse by the time it's done. For the bit rate, you wanna set that to high. You wanna get the highest quality. For white balance for a night lapse, I recommend doing 3200K. It's gonna give you that proper lighting and it's gonna look good right out of the camera. For the ISO min and max, you generally wanna adjust both of these to be at 800, cause you don't want that changing during a night lapse either. But you do need that ISO set as high as it can go with the ideal balance of it still looking good. You can do 1600 when it's really dark, but I find there's just a lot of noise and it just does not look good. So 800 is generally what you're gonna to wanna to work with there. And I recommend keeping sharpness at medium and color it natural. And we're gonna hit this and go back to video. So those are all of the modes on the camera. And I guided you through setting all of those up so that you can have the best quality footage straight out of the GoPro. Now what I finally wanna talk about here is I wanna talk about some of the accessories that you can use with the GoPro. So we're gonna switch back to my main camera and I'm gonna move this out of the front of my face. All right, so for this final segment, I wanna talk about some of the top accessories that I recommend using with your GoPro. And these are accessories that I recommend even beginners have because they're gonna help you get a lot better footage and a lot better quality to that footage from your GoPro. And most of these accessories are gonna make it easier for you to use this GoPro. So the first one I wanna talk about is the Media Mod. The Media Mod allows you to get even more out of your GoPro. So the good news is if you have the media mod already, if you own a Hero 9 or a Hero 10, this is fully compatible with the Hero 11. All you gotta do is take off the side door here, which you lift it, pops off just like that. And then you're gonna make sure the USB-C port lines up with this corresponding port on the media mod. And you're gonna slide it in. It's gonna click into place. Then you're gonna close the door. So when you have it in the media mod, you've got a couple connectors here where you can connect an external mic or a light on top here and also one on the side. And then the media mod has these built-in microphones as well. And then it's got some ports on here. As you can see, it detected my media mod being connected and it's gonna tell you what mic is connected by default. But this also has three ports on it. One of them is a mini HDMI port one of them is a USB-C port, so you can charge this, you can plug it in through the media mod. And then one of them is the 3.5 millimeter jack, which is what I use with my wireless microphone. So if I wanna get really good quality audio out of here, I plug in my wireless mic here and I connect it on the side. That gets really good quality audio. If you don't wanna use an external mic and you wanna get better quality audio versus just from the GoPro, the media mod does have this front facing mic and this rear facing mic, and that will enhance your audio by quite a bit. I definitely recommend picking up the media mod if you want more flexibility, especially with the audio on your GoPro. Which by the way, if you are a GoPro subscriber, a lot of these items can be got for a pretty good discount from GoPro. I am a subscriber and a lot of these accessories I was able to save quite a bit of money on. So for that $49.99 per year, it's well worth it. So next, let's talk about the door here. So GoPro also sells what they call a pass-through door. And this pass-through door, the only difference is there's an opening right there for a power cable to connect to the USB-C port. So I'm gonna click this door on and seal it up. So this is good if you're gonna use some type of external power pack for a night lapse, which is another one of my accessories that I recommend. When you're doing a time lapse or a night lapse, your battery is going to last a couple hours before it turns off. So generally you're going to want an external power pack because generally you're going to have your camera set up for at least a couple hours filming a time lapse or night lapse. I use this one right here from Anchor. 
It works great with the GoPro. It's given me great results every time. It easily plugs in here, keeps your GoPro waterproof, and it will keep it powered for a couple of days at a time if this is fully charged. So I've linked to this in the description below as well, but I definitely recommend having one of these if you're gonna use your GoPro for a time lapse or a night lapse, or if you want a way to charge your GoPro on the go on an adventure. Maybe you don't wanna own that many batteries. and Maybe you just wanna be able to charge this on the go. You also can hook up the battery charger, which is my next accessory. I recommend having this dual battery charger for the GoPro batteries. That way you can charge two of them here and you don't have to have your GoPro plugged in charging one at a time. So the great thing is you can also use this power pack to plug these in. You can charge your GoPro batteries on the go. So let's say you're on an adventure and at the end of the day, you get to your tent, you get to your hammock and you wanna be able to charge your GoPro batteries. All you gotta do is plug them in, turn on your power pack and you're gonna see the lights light up on here. And right now they're of course both yellow because both of these batteries need some charging. So yeah, this, this Anchor power pack is great. I highly recommend it for an external battery. And then this dual battery charger from GoPro is also fabulous. And yes, I recommend having at least two Enduro batteries. I recommend picking up an extra. Regardless of how you're going to power your GoPro, it's always a good idea to have at least two. That way when one wears out on you, you've got another fully charged you can pop in and keep recording. Other than that, I recommend having some type of selfie stick. My favorite is the El Grande. And this one, I like it because it can extend really far. So there is the Shorty also that GoPro makes. The Shorty is a, that one goes up to about a foot and it also functions as a tripod. El Grande does not function as a tripod. That is something to keep in mind. However, the extendability of this gives you a lot more flexibility when you're filming. If you wanna have the camera way out here talking to it, if you want it up here, if you want it down here short, where you're holding it relatively close in a wide angle, it gives you all kinds of flexibility. You can twist it to get it to stay in place. Then you twist it again to get it to collapse. It's got the built-in GoPro mount right here on the top and you would just mount your GoPro right on here and then you're good to go. So I do recommend picking up one of these. GoPro sells several, they sell a three-way. Uh, they have a lot of options. GoPro also sells the Volta. The Volta has a giant built-in battery, a giant compared to these. And the amount of power that will provide is approximately the equivalent of about four of these Enduro batteries. That's what I found with my testing. So the Volta is great because you can plug in your GoPro and it's gonna maintain that power for several hours. So. The Volta's great if you don't wanna carry around a lot of these batteries. Price-wise, it's gonna work out to about the same price as buying four of these batteries. So the Volta is worth looking at too for that purpose. And my final recommendation is this metal GoPro mount right here. So the GoPro mounts, like the default ones that come here, they don't have the tripod mounting option like this one does. This has the thread so you can put it onto a tripod and use your GoPro on a tripod, which is useful in a lot of cases. But a lot of the mounts out there are made of plastic. Plastic does not hold up well over time. In fact, I've had the plastic ones break on me after just a couple uses. But this one right here for $10, it's made of metal. It's very rugged. I've had this one for four or five years now and it has not let me down. It works great. Uh, the thumb screw that comes with it is also solid, does a really good job. Like I said, it's $10. I've linked to this one in the description as well. This accessory is not from GoPro. I had to get this from Amazon as I had to get my Anchor uh, external battery pack from Amazon as well. But the rest of these accessories I got directly from GoPro and they work great. You can also get these accessories from Amazon. So if you prefer buying stuff from Amazon instead of directly from GoPro, I've linked to the GoPro store on Amazon. You can check out all these items there as well. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, if you're serious about getting really good audio quality and having maximum flexibility with your GoPro, I do recommend the DJI wireless mic. It's got two mics. You can attach one to you and one to a friend. And both of those audio feeds will feed into your GoPro because you'll have the receiver on the GoPro. 
and it will be plugged into the media mount. You'll have it plugged in here via the 3.5 millimeter cable, and it's gonna feed in both audio directly into your video. And these also have a backup option where you can record the audio on them. So this has a record button where you can record it on here. That way, for some reason, if the audio didn't come out well in your GoPro feed, all you have to do is plug this in via USB-C cable and you can get the audio off the storage on here. You can also be quite far away from your GoPro. Uh, these mics have quite a distance on them. If you want a more cost-effective option, there are some other options out there. This J12 kit from Ulanzi is one of them I recommend for the best budget option for wireless mics. You can also connect this receiver to the media mod. And then this also has two microphones. The cost of this is a lot less than DJI wireless mics. And while these mics are not as good as a DJI wireless, for the price, they are pretty impressive. So I recommend checking these out as well if you want a more budget-friendly option or if you're just starting off and you'd like to use these. So it's been a busy day. Got through the unboxing and all the settings on this camera. Then I took it out and did a lengthy most of the day hike with the family today. So I'm back from that hike now, got my coffee here, and I'm ready to show you the part of this video that involves the Quick App. The Quick App, of course, is the app that we use to install the firmware on the Hero 11. And the Quick App is going to be your easiest way to get footage from your GoPro to your phone or your iPad or tablet, and then share that footage. So even if you don't want to edit that footage, I recommend using the Quick App because as the name implies, it is quick. It's quick and it's easy. So I wanna go through a few key features on the Quick App to show you how to do some basic things like share the footage, how to edit it, if you wanna do a little bit of tweaking or touch up on it, and then how to share it to the various platforms. So I'm gonna go through a few tips and tricks for using the Quick App that'll make it hopefully a lot easier and simple for you. I'm gonna bring this up on my phone and I'm gonna do a screen recording on my phone so that I can share that in this video. It'll be a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing on here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the Quick App here, and then we're gonna turn on the GoPro. So we can either turn it on here where it says tap to power on, or we can turn it on with the button here. I'm gonna do the tap to power on. And I have found it doesn't always offer me that tap to power on option. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. When it does offer it, I just like to use that simple enough. When it doesn't, it's going to offer you the option to connect via Bluetooth. And then it's gonna show this, what you see right here. So this is the main screen that you see in the Quick App when you click on GoPro. And this actually allows you to control your GoPro from your phone. So if you wanted to use your phone as a remote, you can do a lot of things here. So some of the key buttons here, uh, this button on the left here is the power button. This enables you to power off the GoPro or power it on from your phone. 
uh, the gear symbol over here. If you go to this, this shows you a lot of those main menu controls that I went through earlier on in this video. And so you can adjust any of those here quite easily from your phone. It also shows you what firmware version you're on and your battery level, as well as your SD card capacity. And then down here is where you can switch between your modes and some other key settings. So if we click this symbol right here, that's gonna take us to the time lapse or time warp mode. It's gonna take us to the video mode in the middle and then photo mode on the right. And then of course you can enable preview. If you'd like to see a preview of what the camera's seeing, you can click on that and it's gonna show you that on your phone, but you're not able to have a continuous view of what the camera's recording. Once you hit record, that goes away on your phone. So that is something important to note. And then of course, it's gonna tell us the GoPro has new footage. So what we can do is we can click download there and it's gonna download all of it, or we can go here where it says view media and we can selectively pick clips to put on the quick app. So I'm going to do the selective option because I have filmed uh, hundreds and hundreds of different clips, photos, time lapses, all kinds of stuff. And if I download all of that, it's gonna take a while, even though it is pretty fast. And I'm not gonna go through all of those clips with you today. I'm just gonna go through a couple to kind of show you a few basics that I think are really helpful to know uh, before you're sharing clips. So we're gonna go here where it says view media and it is going to show me all of the footage here that is on my camera. If you go up here at the top where it's got that down arrow, you can filter by photos, videos, highlights, capture date, file size. There's a lot of different options, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna do capture date because I kinda want them to show in chronological order of how I captured them. So what I wanna take a look at first is I wanna take a look at one of those brand new eight by seven aspect ratio clips. So I'm gonna pick one of those clips here uh, let's pick this one right here. It's a good uh, 10 second clip. And this is in that eight by seven aspect ratio, which is pretty cool. So this of course is a low res preview, but your buttons down here on the bottom, the first one on the left here, the down arrow, that's gonna download the clip to your device. And that's gonna be the full resolution size when it does that. So when we click view media, we can then go here and this is gonna be the full res. So that clip looks a lot better. Uh, there's a lot more detail in there. And this was filmed in 10-bit, by the way, with the 10-bit color. So now that that's loaded, uh, there's the edit button over here. When you click on that, it's gonna give you several different options down here. So there's clip. Clip is gonna bring up this timeline where you can decide if you wanna cut out some of the clip. You're gonna clip on the scissors here, and then you're gonna drag this along so let's say we wanted to cut it right, let's say we wanted to cut it right about there, seven seconds. I'm gonna click on that again. And the important thing to note is wherever it's highlighted in blue, that's gonna be what it keeps. But whatever's grayed out is what it's going to clip and get rid of once you hit that check mark. So I'm gonna hit the check mark down here in the lower right, and I'm gonna click save. And it's gonna offer you the option to save as a new clip that way your original's preserved in case you change your mind or you decide you wanna work from that original for some other use case. So I'm gonna click save as new clip and then that's gonna be in the app gallery now. So if I go back, I'll click on that seven second clip and we can go back here to the edit button and you can do some framing. So the framing is gonna be one of the biggest use cases for the eight by seven. And when you click on fit, this is where you have a bunch of different options. So Eight by seven, of course, is the default, but if you wanna make it 16 by nine, if you click on that, you'll see, look how much flexibility you have there. You can go all the way up like that. You can do all the way down there. It's really cool. So if I wanted to do 16 by nine on this, I'm gonna pick something like that right there because it's got my subject well-framed in there. If I wanted to do four by three, like a photo, I would click that. If I wanted to do one by one for certain platforms such as Instagram, I would click that. And I also could do seven by eight, which is gonna make it a little more vertical and slightly cropped. I can do three by four, and then there's nine by 16. So nine by 16 is gonna be the resolution you normally want to use when you're doing a short on YouTube. Cause that's gonna be similar to like a vertical video on your phone. 
So the nine by 16, when you're in the eight by seven, as you can see, you've got a lot of flexibility. You can really get this crop the way you want it. So I think in this case, if I was to crop it nine by 16, I would do something like that right there. And another great thing is this also will allow you to do the horizon leveling after the fact, even if you didn't film with horizon level. So I'm gonna go back to eight by seven to kind of show you that. I'm gonna click there and that automatically did the horizon leveling. And you of course can rotate or flip the clip if you want to as well. There are certain use cases where that could apply. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna do 16 by nine and I'm gonna drag this up a little bit and I'm gonna frame it right about there. And I like how that looks, so I'm gonna click the check mark. And by the way, you don't have to click save after each of these changes. Uh, I just showed you that as an example with the first one when I cut the clip, but you can do all of your changes down here first and then click save. And that's what I would recommend doing most of the time. And each item you've changed at the bottom, it's gonna show you that blue mark over top of it so you can keep track of that. So for filter, GoPro has a lot of different styles you can use to kind of spice up your footage. So if it's got something you really like, there's Cine, there's Keel, there's Waimea, there's Vibe, all kinds of stuff. So you can pick a filter that kind of fits uh, what's going on in your footage. Uh, if you have something that has the color palette that you would like, you can pick that. Uh, oftentimes, I like, the, uh, I like the cinematic one. And what I'll do with that one is I'll, I'll reduce the intensity of the filter a little bit and then hit the check mark. I kind of like how that looks. You know, that's kind of a quick way to add some excitement to the clip. That looks really cool. My GoPro auto powered off because I had not touched it for five minutes at idle. There's also the speed clip here. So if you wanted to, you could change the speed of this depending on what you filmed it in. If you click here, let's say we wanna make it half speed. You're gonna select the speed down here and then you're gonna drag the timeline for whatever portion of this you want to be that half speed. And then once you've selected that, you're gonna hit the check mark and the timeline's gonna show you what part of it's half speed and what part of it's a normal speed. We'll hit the check mark there. And so let's do a preview. So there's our slow motion. And then right there, it kicks back to normal speed. And you can do all kinds of stuff with the normal speed on each side of a slow motion. And it kind of has that speed ramp effect where it's normal speed, slows down, back to normal speed. You can do a lot of things there. So I recommend checking out that feature as well. And then the adjust here, you can hit auto and it's gonna do an auto adjust of the lighting, the saturation, the colors, all kinds of stuff. Now I of course have that cine filter on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that filter so we can see how this footage looks straight out of the GoPro with the auto adjustment. So I undid the filter. And so that's the auto adjust there. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I like how that adjusted it. I like how that looks. But if you want to tweak any of these, if you want to fine tune something, you can click on each of these and you can drag the slider here and you can adjust it to how you would like it. Sometimes I'll work a little bit with the shadows and highlights, uh, depending on the lighting in that footage. Sometimes that's beneficial. I find those two in particular are. So I'm gonna bump the highlights a little and I'm gonna bump the shadows down a little. And then once you've made your changes, hit the check mark. And then finally, there is a stickers option. So if you wanna add a logo to your footage like that, it's kind of cool. You can add it up there. But once you've made all of your changes to the clip, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up here and you're gonna click save. And then once the clip is saved, it's gonna show right there and you can hit play. You can make sure you like how everything looks. And so now at this point, uh, down here at the bottom, there's also this option where you can actually grab a photo from this. So that's kind of cool. So you can drag anywhere here and you can grab a frame from the shot. So I think one of the frames I might want to grab is maybe right there where my wife stands by that tree. So I'm going to click save frame and I'm going to save that to the app.
You can also save to the photos on your phone or you can share directly to media, which is great. If you were to click share to media, it's gonna then pop up those options and it's got Instagram, Facebook, and then if you click here, it's gonna give you other options depending on what apps are installed on your phone. And then this next one here, uh, this is gonna kinda go into the GoPro editing suite where GoPro is gonna customize the edit. They're gonna add some music. This is if you want like an auto edit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you can adjust the themes. They've got a bunch of options down here. So that is pretty cool. You can adjust the title. You can adjust the music, all kinds of stuff. I know the point of this was no edit and those are the settings I showed you for the GoPro. But if you want to do a little bit of tweaking on your clip to make it more exciting, that's what you can do here in the quick app. And this next button here allows you to do a highlight tag. So if there's a part of the clip you want to tag, this is especially useful if you have really long clips, you can tag a highlight and it's gonna show there on your timeline. Then of course, if you wanna delete your clip, you can hit the delete and you're gonna delete right there. I do not want to delete this clip, but if you want to, you can hit delete and it's gonna remove it from the quick app. We're gonna go up here to the top and we're gonna click this up arrow button. And that is gonna allow us to save to photos or share to media. And I'm going to save it to my photos for now because I want to show you, you can adjust the export quality. So we're going to click on this cog here and I want to export it in 4K, first of all. And I want to do high quality. Even if you're sharing it to a platform that's going to compress it, which most platforms are, I recommend doing the high quality. But for the Kodak, I recommend doing H.264 because as it says here, it is more compatible with devices and that clip is generally just going to play better for most people when they're watching it. So I'm gonna click continue, and then it's gonna finish saving this here. Usually it doesn't take too long. If your clip is longer than like 30 seconds, it might take a little bit here, but generally it's pretty fast. It's gonna tell you the media is saved. And so if I didn't want to do that, if I wanted to share it directly to media, I can do that here. And let's say I wanted to share this to YouTube. It's gonna offer you the same export quality. And then when you hit continue, it's gonna auto open your YouTube app. And then you're gonna finish the sharing process in the YouTube app. And if you wanted to share to Instagram or Facebook, you would just click those icons and it's gonna offer you the export quality once again. And then once you've adjusted that, you're gonna hit continue. And then when you hit continue, it's going to finish preparing the clip and then it's gonna transfer you to that app on your phone to finish the sharing process, which is pretty cool. So I'm using Instagram as the example. It's gonna prompt you, it's gonna say, GoPro Quick wants to open Instagram. You click open. It's gonna open the Instagram app and then it's gonna give you the options here if you wanna make this a story or a feed. So you're then just gonna go through those steps on Instagram and share it. Now, of course, if I was sharing this to Instagram, I didn't wanna use the 16 by nine. I would have wanted to use the one-to-one. -one. So something to keep in mind. The one-to-one -one or the nine by 16 are gonna be best depending on how you're sharing it on Instagram. So that's the basics of how you edit a video on here in the Quick App and the different buttons and what those do. I'm gonna show you one other clip here and that's gonna be a photo. So I took a lot of test photos on here too and I wanted to show you uh, what you can do with those on here. All right, and once that media has loaded, I'm gonna go here and select a photo. All right, so I'm gonna select this photo right here, and I'm gonna click the download button in the lower left here. It's gonna copy it to the Quick App. I'm gonna click View Media. All right, so generally with the photos, I recommend doing at least a little bit of editing before sharing. Now this one, definitely needs some editing because that tree there on the right hand side looks kind of ridiculous because of the wideness of the angle and how close I was to that tree at the time. So I'm going to click the edit button here and I'm first of all going to click the frame and for the fit I'm going to do four by three because four by three is a common photo resolution and in this case I'm going to drag it up because I kind of like how those trees look with the sky there. So I'm going to click the check mark I'm gonna do some adjusting here. I'm gonna click auto to start with, but that definitely made it too bright for my liking. So I'm gonna bump the exposure down a little. I'm gonna bring the contrast up a little. 
Vibrance will leave alone. Temperature will leave alone. Uh, shadows, I'm going to bump that up just a little bit. Highlights, I'm going to bring those down. Uh, if you notice the sky there, when I bring them down, the sky pops a little better. So I'm going to bring those way down. And I will mention, if you shoot with RAW on here, you're not able to edit the RAW files on the Quick App. You would have to use an app like Lightroom Classic or something like that on your phone, or you would have to edit those on a computer. But the raw ones are gonna give you a lot more control over the items that I just went through. So that is worth mentioning. And then here's the filters. So if you wanted to pick a filter, you can do that. Kind of like how that one looks with the scene. That looks pretty cool. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna keep it at no filter. And then under the frame, I do wanna do a little bit of cropping. So what I'm gonna do because I need to maintain that frame is I'm gonna have to zoom this in a little bit to crop out that tree on the right. So this is where it started. I can zoom in a little and then I can move it over this way. So I don't have to zoom in a whole lot. I'm gonna bump that back a little bit. So I really like how that photo looks now. I'm gonna just bring this up a little bit more uh, right about there. I like how that looks a lot. So I'm gonna click the check mark and I'm gonna click save and it's gonna save the photo. So now if you're to zoom in on that, that looks really good. The 27 megapixels on here, it does give a lot of good quality in the photo. Uh, so far I've noticed I really like that. And so once the photo is finished, uh, if we'd like to share that, and then you would click this and you can save to photos or share it to media. So again, if you wanted to share it direct to Facebook, Instagram, you can click share media. And if you wanna to save to photos, just click save to photos. In this case, I'm gonna click save to photos. And the third and final item I'm gonna show you on here is I'm gonna show you a time warp. So we're gonna go back to GoPro. We're gonna click view media. And it's this one right here. This is one of the many. So that's a very low res preview right now. So I'm going to click here to download it. And once it's downloaded, I'm gonna do view media and I'm gonna click right here. We're gonna preview that. Looks pretty good. Obviously there's a little bit of this in it because there was a lot of ups and downs on the trail, but overall I like how that looks. So if you click edit, it's gonna offer you basically all the same options as videos because it is a video file, it's an MP4. So usually with time warps, the framing is gonna be what you wanna tweak a little bit. So you can do the fit here. Uh, you can do the eight by seven, four by three, 16 by nine, one to one, seven, eight, three, four, and nine by 16. So really this particular clip, I kind of like the nine by 16. So this one might be like a good one that I wanna share to like a YouTube short or something like that. Uh, the one-to-one -one is pretty cool also though. So Instagram sharing, this would be a great one to share to Insta. Um, so in this case, let's stick with the one by one. And so you've of course got your filter options, you've got your speed, you know, if you wanna adjust the speed a little. Uh, generally, I like sticking with the default for the time warp, but if you wanna adjust it, you can do so. And then under adjustments here, I'm gonna click auto, because I wanted to adjust the colors, as well as some of the other aspects of this footage. Overall, I like how that looks. That came out pretty well straight out of the camera. I'm gonna bump the shadows down a little bit more. That kind of gives a little bit more of that depth of those blacks to the scene. Kind of makes them pop a little more with the greens. Highlights, I'm gonna bump those down just a little bit. Some of the brighter areas up here, it's gonna help that look a little bit better. So let's give it a preview again. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna click save and it's gonna save our clip. So that is how you do some basic editing in the Quick App, or if you just wanna take your clips, put them on the Quick App and share them, that's all you gotta do. It does make it nice and easy. Now, if you do decide to upload your stuff to the cloud, you're gonna see that here under cloud. 
And in order to do that, all you have to do is go here and set up the auto upload where it says set up now. It's gonna search for Wi-Fi networks and then it's gonna prompt you to go through that process. Then anytime you're at home and you have this plugged in and charging, it's gonna do the auto upload. It's gonna start on its own. You're not gonna have to tell it to do that. And it does go pretty quickly, which is great. And then where it says the GoPro has new footage, you click download. It's going to download all of that footage into your Quick App. So that's important to note uh, what that's gonna do. Like I said, I don't want all of my footage, so I'm gonna click cancel here. But if you did want it all at once, it's gonna do that. Well, there you have it. That was my complete ultimate guide for beginners for setting up the GoPro Hero 11 Black. If you made it to the end, congratulations. That was a lot of content. I'm really excited about all the new features GoPro added to this camera, and I'm gonna be using this camera a lot. And until we talk again, happy GoProing.